Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich. Welcome to an ankle cast. I know you probably thought this feed was dead, but it's not dead, it's just very slow, very, very slow in coming. Um, I actually started recording ankle cast not too long ago where I was going to talk about going to get a test done on my heart, and then nothing happened with that, as seems to always be the case when I go to the doctor. I go to the doctor and they say, sure, yeah, well, we need to schedule you for something down the line. And then I go to that thing down the line and they're like, yeah, well, we'll get you scheduled for this thing down the line. And it's just one of those things where you never actually hear results until six months after you get started. And by that time, you're already cured or dead but uh, nothing worthwhile happens of it. So that episode never made any air. But uh, I thought we'd, we, we could do a new episode today. I have Rish Outfield here by my side. And uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit about this thing that we started doing on our blogs, which is a live blogging of a story that we are writing. So both Rish and I are writing a story, not together. We're writing each separate stories. And then each day as we write them, we post them on the blog. And you can read them as they appear, as they are created. I don't know if that's neat or stupid or what, but we're doing it. So get used to it. It could be a bit of both. We're here. We're queer. Get used to it. Um, <laughs> indeed. Uh, I, this is Rich Outfield. I don't know if I said it uh, before, but uh, you hadn't yet. But now they know. But, but this is something that we've been wanting to do for a long time, and we kept putting it off. Just as other things come up, or, or you know, I'm in the middle of a project, or I have a deadline, or whatever, and I can't make it a priority. But then we did a that gets my goat, and at the end of that, that gets my goat. We talk about our live blogging thing as though it's in the past. Because <laughs> your reasoning was, well, by the time this actually airs, we will have done that for sure. And I was like, yeah, of course we will have. And when it came time to publish or put out, to podcast that, that gets my goat episode. The question was, well, do we just hold off and not release this episode until we've done it? Or do we just do it? And you said, well, okay, let's start it on Monday. We'll actually do the live blogging thing. What do you call it on your part? On your yeah, I call it, call it a live blogging a story is what I call it. Okay. But yeah. So we, just, we did. And we started it last week. It's been a week since we started it. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with how it's gone so far. I've written probably 6,000, 5,000, 6,000 words. I was surprised the very first day I wrote like 1,600 words, which I didn't expect to happen. I sat down thinking, okay, I'll get in 250 words and I'll be done. Um, but I wound up just going and going and I had, for some reason, I had lots of time. Nobody bothered me. They just let me write and I wrote for a while and was able to get all the way through the entire first scene. Um, and I was pretty excited and since then I've had several days. I, I think... I've come close to a thousand words every day that I've written, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it's gone so far. Well, see, that's good, right? What is it that Dean Wesley Smith says you're supposed to write a day, if you're a, an actual writer? I think he says you, you should carve out an hour a day to write, if you really want to be a writer, I think is what he says, although I'm not sure if he's actually... Oh, did, did wasn't he the guy that says... said you, there was some ridiculously small number of words that you were supposed to write a day. And if you can't manage that, then go F yourself. Do you remember that? It was just like the really, uh, <laughs> the really, um, uh, no holds barred, uh, you know, sit down with somebody who claims that they're a writer. It's like, if you can't eke out 15 minutes in a day, then you don't get to call yourself a writer. You're a pus bucket is what you get to call yourself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically that's what he said. I remember you pointing that uh, out to me one time because I'd printed out one of his blogs for you and you're like, Oh, this is, this is kind of tough stuff. And I read that and I thought, Oh, yeah, maybe I, Maybe it's time I stop calling myself a puss bucket um, and actually do some writing because, yeah. 
But 15, I think basically he goes through and he, he does math all the time. And he says, okay, 15 minutes, you can probably write about 250 words, which is a page. Uh, and, you know, if you write for an hour, therefore, you write a thousand words. And a novel is 90,000 words, more or less. So you could write a novel in 90 days, only working an hour a day. You know, you can't complain about how hard it is when if you could do a job like that for you know if you had a full-time job and most authors they're only expected to have like a a book a year or something like that you know people don't expect authors to have lots of books they don't expect you to write one every three months they expect much less than that and you can do that in 90 days just working an hour a day imagine how Everybody should jump for the chance to, to do that. You know what I mean? If you worked an hour a day, you know, then what do you do with the other 23 hours of your day? Um, See, when you put it that way, it does seem like, well, that's not anything to ask. Everybody should be able to manage that. But it's shocking how difficult it is to write every day, let alone for an hour every day. Yeah. Because there are a thousand voices saying, come do me, look at me, come here, sir, look at these. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, shoot, well, I'd kind of like to do this, and oh, I really have to do this. And I told my wife I would do this, and I told my lover I would do this. And you get pulled in all sorts of directions. But And I found, you know, because I don't have an agent or I don't have fans or anything like that, that the only person pulling me in the direction of writing is me. And so, yeah, it's just, it's frustrating. But having you say, hey, on Monday, we're going to start this project and we're going to write publicly. We're going to blog each day and hold ourselves accountable. The, the Whoever reads our blog will be able to see whether I wrote today or whether I did something else, whether I slacked off. We've committed ourselves to doing that. And that's kind of a neat thing to know that there are people that are like, hey, Hey, you didn't post today. Is, is anything wrong? Kind of, th and and granted, I haven't really had that. It would be great if people were emailing <laughs> yeah. and say, "What happens next?" Right. But I, I because you're doing it, and because I don't want to slack off or look bad compared to you, I'm doing it too. And uh, talk for just a second, okay? Your your story is called Fireflies, mm -hmm. or, plural, right? Yes. And this is an idea that you've had for a long time. How come you never wrote it before now? Um, because I'm lazy, generally. Uh, I'm, like you were saying, it's, I think if if I were Dean Wesley Smith, who has a career as an author, and that's how he makes his money, an hour a day would be nothing. That would be like, oh yeah, no, I'll do three, I'll do four, five, six hours a day writing. I will actually make this a job, and I will work on it a lot, and therefore, instead of writing a novel every three months I'd have a novel every month and a bunch of short stories on top of it because that would be how I would get money how else would I get money if I didn't do that stuff and sure there's lots of distractions but you know I go to my job every day right now because I have to have money and I cannot do without it because there's bills and etc cetera, etc cetera. and so automatically there's eight hours of my day that's not available for writing Plus the freaking 45 minutes I've got to drive to get there and the 45 minutes I've got to drive to get back. So that's nine and a half hours. And that's if there's no traffic. Right. Now, traffic often will make it more like a two hour round trip. So it's 10 hours and, um, you know, you, you keep doing the math <laughs> and pretty soon an hour a day is actually a lot of my spare time because, you know, then there's sleep. Every person needs it. And maybe that's what I'm supposed to be sacrificing to be a writer. I don't know. But, I mean, I need at least some of it. Um, and, yeah, I've got things that I have to do, commitments with my family, et cetera, et cetera. So it's actually fairly difficult to carve out uh, an hour a day. But, you know, it's also a matter of priorities. For a long time, I've made a point of carving out an hour a day uh, for running, I would go and I would get up at 6.30 in the morning and I would go out and I'd run around the neighborhood and that was just more my priority than writing, I guess. 
And then recently I, ha I was having troubles with... Uh, with uh, I'm not going to go into the details because it'll take too long, but having trouble with health. And so I stopped running for a while. And I thought, you know what I should do is start just keep still getting up at 6.30, but instead when I would go out and run, I should just write in that time. Um, but instead I slept. But yeah, I mean, I had this idea a long time ago when I was out running, I was listening to uh, music and I listened to this one song and it was talking, uh, the, the song is called Fireflies. Um, it's by Owl City. And they was talking in the song about dreams and etc cetera, etc cetera. and somehow the idea came to me about uh, what if there was a person whose dreams would basically be summoned into real life while he was asleep and dreaming and then I came up with kind of a story that went with that and I'd even uh, t talked it out on my recording device I would do that sometimes use my commute as a time to plan story writing and I would record myself speaking about it, talking, blah, 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 this happens and that happens and I think it needs to be like this. And then, yeah, it's just kind of sat there as idea for future time when I'm ambitious enough to finally write something. And uh, it's funny because I wasn't... I didn't know what story I would write for this little deal that we're doing. But I guess I said that was that must have been the story I was most excited about at the time when we recorded that episode of That Gets My Goat. And so I actually said, I'm going to write the story about this. And then when you edited that episode of That Gets My Goat, I actually had to ask you, oh, what did I say I was going to write for my story? And you said, oh, you're going to write this. And I went, oh, okay, I guess I'll write that. <laughs> But you weren't <laughs> delighted to hear that. I wasn't. I was actually more excited about a different story at the time. And I was thinking, oh, I'll write this story. And then you told me the other story that it was. And I went, oh, okay, I guess I'll write that one. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm writing the one that I said I was going to write. and uh, But it's working out. It's, it's going well, I think. And I'm excited about my progress and about doing it. I have... We're recording this on Monday which is now the third day in a row that I haven't written, which is a possibly a bad sign. Saturday I have no excuse for, really. I mean, I had a lot of stuff going on, but there was time when I could have written, and instead I didn't. Um, I almost didn't write on Friday. I really didn't want to. I didn't feel well, and it was late, and... I forced myself to write anyways and managed to get in like a thousand words that day. And I f was proud of myself. And then I woke up with the worst headache the next morning. I don't know if it had anything to do with forcing myself to stay up an hour later and write. But man, did I feel like crap on Saturday. But yeah, I didn't write Saturday. Sunday was Father's Day. So I said, screw it. I'm taking it off. And then uh, today I had time that I could have written, but I kept getting distracted by the World Cup games that were going on. Um, I don't really have a good excuse for that. But uh, it's also usually a hard day for me to write because I go straight from work to meet with Rish. And so I don't have the evening to write like I sometimes, or often, I should say, do when I do write. So You could still write today, though, because as soon as we're done recording this, you're going home. That's true, and we're going home much earlier than normal, so I could possibly still get some writing in when I get home and I may have to try and see if I can do that because I feel guilty I feel like I'm blowing it well then commit right now on the air that you will write a little bit today and when this airs let's say this airs Wednesday or Thursday people will be like they'll be able to go to your blog and look if there was something on Monday all right I commit on the air I confess <laughs> um so tell us, Rish, we don't have that much time. So you've got a story that you wanted to tell us about what's been going on. You've had some interesting occurrences with this contest. This <laughs> yeah, I, and I, we don't have a ton of time, but I could talk for 20 minutes about it. I mean, first off, we were going to do this two months ago, three months. I, like February, we were going to do this, this live blogging, live writing thing. And so I wrote a post and said, you know, okay, this is going to be my first day and this is what Big has challenged me to do. And 
I'm going to write. And I wrote like the first couple paragraphs of a story that you had and I had, had kicked around the idea for like a broken mirror thing. And then I don't know what happened. You and I didn't end up doing that. That the, the live uh, blogging thing mm-hmm. in February. And I moved on to another story and I got really, really into it. And I was about in the middle of that story, um, a story about two girls that become friends and then become enemies. And, and then you become said, frenemies. Right. <laughs> that, that, that would be a good title. Frenemy. We just made up a brand new word. Oh, no. That word is not brand new and it's overused like crazy. Whoops. But uh, you said, hey, well, let's do this live blogging thing. And I was like, yeah, but I'm in the middle of this story and it's really big. And I'm afraid that if I stop right now, I'm going to lose momentum and I'm going to have wasted my time. Let's wait until I finish this story. And so we did wait. And I think two or three weeks later, I finished it. Let's say that I finished it like the beginning of April. And uh, I was like, okay, now we can go. And I came up with this idea of a, 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 a plane that crashes in the ocean between London and Miami. And what happens when they are, you know, the rescue boats came and I was like, okay, this is going to be my thing. And I'd written like the first, I'd written the crash scene in my notebook. And then one day I couldn't find my notebook. I I, I went to continue and I I would take this notebook to work with me and I would write on my lunch breaks every single day. You know, it's like I would force myself to do that. And it's fun to have some structure where you're like, I'm going to be able to write at this time every single day. And then you hold yourself to it. And, but I couldn't do that once the notebook was gone. And I was like, oh, shoot, what am I going to do? Crap. Um, so I went ahead and I finished writing that uh, that plane crash story um, on pieces of paper and in another notebook and stuff like that. Knowing that eventually I would find that notebook and I would have the beginning again. And then I would put it all together when I typed it up. And, I, wow, I'll have another story. Uh, but we weren't doing the live blogging thing then. And then I never found that notebook. It was just like, oh, shoot, it's gone. And I, I went through all the places that it could have been. And I went to work and I checked the lost and found. I asked, you know, my boss, did did anybody turn in a notebook? Have any of you guys seen it? And that, and it was gone. It wasn't in my car. It wasn't in my room. It wasn't anywhere that I in the house. And I, I just was like, oh, shoot, I lost that novella or whatever I wrote. I mean, it was long. I, I still don't know how big... It was about the frenemies. And I got really bummed about that. And I started to build it up in my head that this was the greatest work of art I have ever created. Because it was gone. Because there was no disproving that. Because it was gone forever. So I decided I would uh, have that be our live writing project. That one. I'm going to... And, and I, I skipped ahead of yet another story that I actually started live blogging. And then realized I couldn't publish it because it was for a contest. But... I, you know, we had talked because of this podcast and said, okay, on Monday, we're going to start. So on Sunday night, I like wrote the opening per- paragraph of this thing. And it's like, okay, this is what I'm going to start on tomorrow when we do the blog uh, of me rewriting this story about the two f- frenemies. And so we started it and I have a disadvantage in that no woman will ever touch me. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. I have another disadvantage beyond that in that. I write all my stuff in a notebook and then for anybody to see it, I have to type it up. So there's an extra step in there that makes it so even if I've written for 15 minutes or an hour a day, I might not have anything to show for it if we're showing our work on the blog. Um, But I I did all right. I think I wrote four days, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then not Friday and Saturday. Uh, on my blog, but I was still writing this story on my uh, on my own in my notebook, in a new notebook. And I'd gotten several pages into it. Um, I think uh, I was telling you today that's probably between four and five thousand words. And uh, yesterday, my nephew came upstairs. My nephews live downstairs, and I live upstairs. Uh, my sister and my nephews, and he said uh, we lost our snake. They had been borrowing a pet snake from my brother-in-law's brother who had gone off to war or camp or to work some in out of state or whatever. And he needed somebody to watch his corn snake. It's one of those great big orange or yellow snakes. 
Um, and they had had it in like a little tank, but they liked to get it out and play with it. And I guess what they did was they got it out and put it back in, but didn't put the lid on and then it was gone. And so yesterday we spent an hour going through, you know, the, the shelves, going, emptying out all the shoes. Because I, 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 my guess is, okay, a snake is going to go someplace dark and like cave-like tight. You know what I mean? Where it's, okay, this is my territory. Nothing can get past me. Nothing can attack me kind of thing. I, I, but I don't know snakes. Maybe they don't do that. We went through everything. We couldn't find anything. So we started like moving the beds and moving the furniture and moving, going through everything in the closet. And at one point we moved my nephew's dresser. And my notebook was behind his dresser, this notebook with the story and all that. And I was just like, how, how did it, how could it be in here? <laughs> and the answer is, well, little kids take stuff that's not theirs. And that seems to be what had happened. But we never found the snake. It's still gone wherever it is. But, but I had found that notebook. And so I it found I, someplace dark and cave-like and burrowed its way in there. And Rish hasn't stopped smiling ever since. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's upsetting. <laughs> and uh, so I, I called you yesterday or I texted you or something. And I was like, what should I do? And you said, well, I don't know. I do what you want. And so I, I, I still don't know because my plan now is, well, I, I should type up this story and, and continue to publish it on my blog. But... I'm not writing it anymore. If I, I you know, I'm certainly not going to continue rewriting it because oh, it was miserable. That's another thing I didn't say. I kicked and screamed every step of the way in rewriting this story because it didn't feel like I was creating. It felt like I was regurgitating. It felt like I was knocking off something that I had seen somewhere before, or, and I was kept tempted to take it in different directions than it went the first time because I was bored. I didn't want to write the same story. It's like, okay, well, if the girls went left originally, now let's find out what would happen if they went right. I, and I, I don't know why that was, but I just, it, it was not a pleasant experience and I never felt like it was as good the second time as it was the first time because I was always like, oh, shoot, I remember the dad said something funny here. What did he say? Instead of just saying, what would be funny for the dad to say? I was trying to remember exactly. Like I was trying to describe a dream or something that I had already read. Anyhow. Um, he does a bad job of describing things he's already read, by the way. Just judging from like hearing him tell me about comic books and then going and reading the comic books he's told me about afterwards and finding out that they're only mildly like the story that he told me. <laughs> yeah, I say I don't understand why my mind works like that. <laughs> because, yeah, I can, I can know that, uh, you know, the, the guy tried and succeeded... But in the back of my mind, it's like, okay, well, he tried three times and failed all three times, and then he succeeded. But why wouldn't I just say it the way it was? I I, I don't know. I have a weird memory that way. Uh, anyhow, so I was talking to you today. I was like, what should I do? And and yeah, that's your your suggestion was just continue to publish it there because you still have to type it up. And in typing it up, I find. You know, oh, I don't like this line. I can fix this line. Or how about if I add this little detail? So I am still writing. Mm -hmm. And you get, I mean, people have started the story, so they want to get to the end of it. And you can still write something else while st you're still publishing this. And if you wanted to, you could publish that afterwards. You know, there's no saying you can't. You can do whatever the frick you want. You're the boss of you, for once. <laughs> um, do you think... I mean, are there people that do this all the time? I, I know that, like, Nathaniel Lee and some of those people out there, like, write a story a day, or they write a story a week, and they just put it out there. Um, do you, is there a benefit of doing that? Oh, well, I think the main benefit of doing that is that people get to read your work. Um... We were just talking a minute ago before we started recording about Cory Doctorow and his saying that the biggest enemy of writers is not that someone will steal your work and, you know, pirate your work, but the biggest enemy for writers these days, or 99% of writers, we should say. I'm sure Stephen King has, it's much more difficult, 
for him to deal with piracy than it is to deal with obscurity. He's not going to deal with it. But for most of us, especially beginning writers, you're obscure. Nobody knows about you. And until they can read your stuff and come to like it, they will continue to not know about you. So the more opportunities you give them to read your stuff, the more likelihood they will buy your stuff in the future. So you make it available in many ways, as podcasts, as you know, a free text file that they can download or uh, whatever, and then you know, put it on your blog, and the people who read your blog will be like, wow, Rich Outfield's a good writer. I should check his stuff out. And I guess the other thing you probably, and, and maybe I should do too, is link to things that they can buy each day. Put links out so that, yeah, you like this? Buy this. I think I've seen several people that do those kind of things on their blogs and they will link to things that you can buy. So that's probably a, a step we need to take. But yeah, I mean, the more you put out there for people to read, the better. And it'll make you write more, too, which will make you better. And so, all around, everybody wins. Okay. Well, then then, then that's fine. Then we're, right on, we're on the right track. And I'm just going to continue to to type up and enhance the stuff that's in this now-found notebook. <laughs> and uh, yeah, at this point, I'm also going to just merge the two beginning sections of of the stories into two and and it's really easy because my first draft began with this girl coming to the apartment and there being a knock at the door that's how it began and in the new version i began with her arriving at the airport to be with her dad and they have a conversation and all that stuff so so it's easy to meld those two because one is a scene that doesn't exist in the other version um, and on top of that, now there's a reason for somebody to go and buy your final version when you publish it. Because they didn't get to see the early bits. They didn't get to see the mel- melded, the merged version. That's true. They only got to see the s- rewrite version of the first half. So, it'll be different. Um, so, yeah, check it out, folks. Uh, rishoutfield.blogspot.com is where you can find Rish's stuff. BigAnklevich.blogspot.com, the same site that you found this podcast on, <laughs> is where you can find my stuff. So if you don't know where to find it, you're, um, I don't know what to do with you. Uh, yeah, check it out. Also, interestingly enough, Marshall Latham decided to throw his hat oh, in the ring. Oh, is he doing it too? I, and I... join us too. And he's been writing a story about this black cat. Uh, he's doing his Poe contest. That I guess he felt guilty for not having done when it was actually uh, on. So he's doing his version of that. And you can check that out. He's publishing that at his live journal, which I believe is Mm. marshalldillon.livejournal.com. So you can check all those out and uh, enjoy them and, you know, work your way through it. We're each writing them and we'll, we'll have a story done within a week or two probably. And maybe we'll, if we liked it enough, I mean, I may just keep doing that. Just every day I write something and I publish it immediately on the blog. I'm actually strongly considering that because I think it would be worthwhile for me. If nothing else, then it's a reason for me to be writing because people are expecting the rest of it. Yeah, so you can help us and Marshall too. I'm going to speak for Marshall in this case by sending us support and just saying, hey, uh, I enjoyed this or keep it up or way to go or hey Marshall has way more words than you do come on pick up the pace all of those things would be cool just to know that there's somebody who's like hey I'm enjoying this or I am reading what you're writing if you read leave a comment saying thanks for that you know just leave a comment each day when we see that there's 10 15 20 comments holy crap that's going to make so much difference compared to zero zero (laughs) and one comment yeah it really it, it would really help so if you are reading it leave a comment that'd be cool um, we're out of time. We actually are out of time. We're on a time limit today, and we are out of it. So I'm going to have to just cut it off. We're actually probably 10 minutes almost past our time limit. That's fine. We, I... So thanks for listening to this uh, awesome return of the Ankle Cast. And, uh, yeah, check out the, the stories and hope you enjoy them. Talk to you later, folks. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rashad Field. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your friggin' way already. Jeez. Hey.